What's up, everybody? This is Talking All That Kaz, and I am DJ Casio. I want to thank you for checking out this particular episode of Talking All That Kaz. On this particular episode, I got another great interview that I conducted here on my radio show at 90.9 FM KCC in Salinas, California. But before we get going with that, I want you to go to this address, djcasio.com, and connect with me on social media, whether it's on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on my Twitter, or even if you go and subscribe to my Mixcloud channel, you can hear all my radio shows that I do in their entirety, music, commentary, and interviews. But this right here, talking all that Kaz, this is for just the interviews, okay? I want to thank everybody who checked out the first round of interviews that I put up. Now we're on to the second round. This particular round, I'm going to focus on 2019, but I'm going to sprinkle it in with some more current stuff too. So you never know what you're going to get. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy another edition of Talking All That Kaz with me, DJ Casio. That's right, that's right. It is indeed 90.9 FM KHDC Radio Blingue here in Salinas, Monterey, and King City. 104.1 FM out there in Hollister, San Juan Batista, and South Gilroy. And of course, we're streaming live worldwide at WednesdayRec.com. And you know, without further ado, because I know she's a very busy, busy person, I am joined right now by the one and only Lisette Melendez. What's up, Lisette? <laughs> okay you there okay now now i got you now i got you we have a slight delay but i'm here <laughs> yeah now, now i got you can you hear me now i can hear you I okay hear you. yeah I, I i had one of the buttons down my bad my bad but i know i know you're extremely busy you got a lot of stuff going on so i'm not going to take a lot of your time tonight because i know it's late out there on the east coast but uh first and foremost how are you doing I can't complain. I first want to give a big shout out to all the DJs out there that supported me from the beginning of my career to to today. Um, it's been a, a big, long journey. It's been painful. It's been joyful. Um, but I'm still here, and it's because of my fans and, and DJs. So first and foremost, shout out to fans, all of the fans and all the DJs. You know, one one thing you've been doing a lot lately, and you and you know, it's from a DJ standpoint, it's definitely well appreciated. Is that you're acknowledging a lot of the DJs and and you know whatnot. I mean, going to a little bit further, I mean, how uh, how much of a a uh, a benefit are like DJs who with long standing support of you? How much of a benefit is that to you? Oh my goodness, I I, I really, I mean, I can't I can't say enough. I can't say enough about DJs. My first record uh, was called Make Noise, and mm. it was geared towards DJs. And although um, a lot of people, now it's when they're catching on, because I was a featured artist on this record, which was my, uh, my first record before Together Forever, but it was geared towards DJs. And um, I don't think DJs get enough credit because you have to spin the record for us artists to get heard you know so people can hear us whether it's in a club whether it's in a car on the radio on a big show it it doesn't matter it's the dj and mm -hmm. sometimes you have to you know i think a true dj will play a record and give it a chance instead of asking themselves ah do i like this record you know if i don't like it i'm not gonna play it a true dj will play a record uh for the fans and then let the fans tell you whether they like it or not and i'm and i will say that because i had an issue an issue uh with my record rise my last record that i released yeah yeah, uh, yeah. but i'm not gonna get into detail because i know you know you know what i'm talking about i i, I, I know i know exactly who you're talking about yeah yeah so i wrote the record rise not to be a club banger not to be the record to, to make you run to the dance floor but to inspire and that was my purpose behind it mm -hmm. and I've I've received so much great support with this record on just on word of mouth social media with no airplay with no FM airplay and 
it's been overwhelming because that was my intention. My intention wasn't to do a club banger because if that's the case, then I'll just drop a beat and just do one line because in clubs, they don't want to hear a song. They want to hear like two, you know, the, the hook and that's it, you know? So that's my intention behind that record. And, and I had a lot of DJ support. And I that's the reason why I thank my DJs because I've always had great support from the beginning. But when I released R- Rise, on my own label, um, it was it was crucial for me to get support, you know, and it just, it happened. It happened because I also acknowledged the fact that DJs do deserve recognition. And I grew up, you know, in Spanish Harlem, a girl from the projects, going to the street jams, because back in the day, there were street jams, and that's the way we fought. We fought by breakdancing, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. who did the best head spins and the best, you know, you know, whatever the spider and windmills all that. windmills so, and the windmill all of that so that's how we i grew up so my music has always been based on what i remember and what i love mm. and it's all drum it's all drums it's all about the drums right and right. when i wrote rise it was about a message so yeah. it was well received and it still is and i will never stop promoting the record because i've had so much support with the record especially from ladies that have been abused domestically, you know, and emotionally. And mm-hmm. I've never been dom- domestically abused, but emotionally, yes, I have. Yeah, you know, see, so. I, I, I was going to ask you a little bit about that because the video uh, really comes from a standpoint of it seemed like a real personal issue with you. So I was wondering if, you know, how deep the, uh, the motivation for the song went. Right, because, well, I saw that growing up. I saw, you know... Uh, I saw it in my family, uh, a lot of alcoholism, and, you know, a lot of alcohol, as we know, you never get a, you don't never hear anybody going to jail because they were just sober walking down the street or they were just chilling in the club. You know, it, it's always, something always happens either if you drink too much, smoke too much, that's just what I remember people getting in trouble over, you know, over drinking or, but I, I, I come from that. I hmm. remember seeing that, but I was never... Thank God that I was never in a relationship that was abusive like that. Mm-hmm. But I felt like I needed to tell a story because there are a lot of women get abused and they're embarrassed to talk about it. And you know what happens? They end up getting killed or they end up getting scorned for life that they have mental issues. With, you know, they can't trust anybody. They can't move forward in their life because they've been abused. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if I have a platform... I'm at the stage in my life right now that I want to be the voice, if I can be, to to talk about it. Now you, you, know? you right. And, mm-hmm. Now, so you you mentioned that while not going through the uh, physical uh, side of it, you were you've been involved in the the verbal side of it. Um, you know, how long does it take you to like get over something like that, or do you ever get over it? Well, you don't get over it if you don't talk about it, mm-hmm. if you don't address it, if you don't acknowledge it, if you're in denial, and you can be in denial. And I think a lot of, you know, the situations that happen now with, you know, people shooting up high schools and, and shooting, you know, mall situations, going to a church and shooting people, you can't be mentally stable to do something like that because it's insane. Mm-hmm. No one in their right minds will do something like that. So I, I put myself in the middle, and I'm not defending. I'm just putting myself, because I have been in situations, and I, and I do suffer from anxiety. I do suffer from uh, depression. I always have since a little girl, and I'm vocal about it, because mm-hmm. I think it's a, it's, it's a time for you to take control of your life. And if you can't take care of yourself and love yourself, you can't love anybody else, you know? So... I think it's important for you to find your happiness within yourself. And I've been married and I have kids, but it's important for me to find my happiness because if I'm not happy, my children will see that. Right. And right. they'll grow up unhappy and it's a cycle. And so and how much of happen. how much of an escape or kind of like a a uh, a repair process is performing for you uh go, knowing that you have that uh, in the back of your head. I mean, how, how influential or how beneficial is being a performer? Oh, my goodness. It's, it's, 
I, I thank, and that's the reason why I've, I now I go on my Facebook Live and I go on IG Live. I do social media live because I want fans to see a, a different side of me. And I really, and I firmly feel that when I perform, uh, it shouldn't, and I don't want to I don't want to say that it, it fulfills me because I do have a family and I do have a husband. I, I still have a, a life aside from performing. But when I do get on that stage, it's like a different world and it, it gives me such a feeling of fulfillment. You know, like I really want, and I see people reminiscing. I see it in their eyes. Like when I do uh, a day in my life, when I sing Make Noise, when I sing Together Forever, Time Passes By, you know, even Rise, you see everybody has a different emotion with that. And especially when I, when I sing Rise now, you see the ladies that sometimes they had uh, kind of like a resistance because women, we can be catty because we're so, we're put in a position that we have to look a certain way and we have to, and it's, it's a bad position for women to be in. Mm-hmm. But with this record, I, I put my guard down and I actually told to my, my queens and I said, you know what? I'm on your side, you know? I, I can be your voice. You know, it, it doesn't have to be about image. It doesn't have to be about singing and looking a certain way. It has to be about standing up for yourself. Right. And and that's what I did with Rise. And you know, it's really. It's I think it's really. It's harder for women as we get older because women and men, women, and I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put it out there. And in society, women just get old. Men get distinguished. Hmm. You know. And we have a, we have to keep on up. We have to dye our hair. We have to nip and tuck. We have to put on the waist cinchers, and we have because that's the position that we've been put in for years. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's unfair. You know, but I'm with the ladies because I go through those trials and tribulations. You know, I'm thin, but I still have a little a little roll on my on my hip, and I have a little roll on my back fat. You know what? I've embraced that <laughs> because. <laughs> It's reality. You know, if we're going to harp on those little things, we're not going to realize what life blesses us with, you know? So, you're getting a great interview, Randy, because I'm really <laughs> open, and you're the first person that I'm really talking to, um, this candid about, you know, as far as opening up with my depression and, and anxiety right. and all that, because a lot of people don't know about that. Well, you know, one of the things I think, uh, and, you know, maybe you you can, you know, deny it or you can, you know, go in further on it. But I think one of the things that's really, I mean, because for a long time, there was the perception that, you know, Lisette's a little bit hard to talk to. She's a little bit, you know, rough around the edges. I think one of the things that's been really beneficial to you is like doing the Facebook Live videos and getting your personality out there and just like showing that, you know, you're not, you know, you're not um, standoffish. You're just a little bit uh, um, guarded. And I think mm-hmm. with with the with the videos, it's helping you kind of let your guard down, as you said. And, you know, like, like I said, show more personality and, you know, just like that's the real the set. Right. Right, and and that's the reason why I, I did it. I it's not for the views, and it's not a challenge of who gets the best views because if if anything, we're trying to break down the science of how social media works and how you can pay, you know, for views and you can pay for this and you can, you know, I try to do everything genuine, um, and I have a fan base and I and I'm thankful. But like you mentioned before, you know, people, I, I was I've always been misunderstood. Because mm-hmm. I was I was always shy, introverted. I came in when I first did Make Noise and Together Forever. I rehearsed six months prior before my first performance. So I rehearsed my assholes to make sure that I was on point when I performed. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to hate me because I try to perfect my craft, then it goes to show that this is the world we live in. You know, you can't please everybody. No, never. So, never. So if you're going to be a DJ, you're going to... Of course, you're going to, you know, rehearse in your room, wherever you live. You're going to rehearse before you, you put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. Yeah. You know, so I I can't get blamed, but I do know because of me being so introverted, I never let people into my world. Um, and then especially after I got burned by the business, then I even, I closed myself off even more. 
Right, right. But today, I'm in a different world. I'm like, you know, I've I've accomplished so much, regardless of what they've thrown at me. So now it's time for my fans to get a chance to see me. You know, whether it's with makeup, whether it's without makeup, whether it's me wearing flip flops in my house or or Uggs. You know, mm-hmm. this is who Lizette Melendez is. She's your typical girl next door. Well, I just want to make sure that you're being safe because I see you putting a lot of videos up when you're driving, and you know you got to be careful <laughs> with that. You got to be careful. I know. I know, I know, I know. You know what it is? Sometimes I get in my car, and that's when my 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 brain starts, you know, getting into creative mode because I have my, you know, I have a an eighteen, a nineteen, eighteen year old kid, and a twelve year old, uh-huh. both boys. So when I get into my car, it's when when I have a minute to just like let it out, you know. And and I know it's unsafe, and I don't recommend that. And it's a bad look. I apologize because it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be. Don't don't repeat it. You know, just don't do, not do you know, what I do. But it's, it's my only time sometimes to talk to my people. Right. And that's right. it. Two yeah. two of the uh, the best videos that I've seen you do. One, you were at a bus stop and you and so you were like explaining to some guy who you were, and he was like trying oh. to like give you his business card. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good yeah, one. I didn't remember that. Yeah, and that wasn't it. You know what? And that's the funniest thing. You know, I'm like, I couldn't script that. You know, I couldn't plan that any better. Right. And he sees me standing there because I had a boat ride. I had a benefit to go to in New York City. And I yeah. did not want to drive my car because I knew the traffic was going to be insane. So I figured, let me go to the bus. Let me be inconspicuous and get there faster. It, it backfired on me. <laughs> it completely did. You know, I made it to the cruise, you know, to the boat ride by the skin of my teeth. But then again, I captured this guy giving me his business card. He didn't know who I was, but he just saw me on my live. And, you know, this is day to day. If I were to put a camera on me, it would be so funny. I mean, it's so funny, the stuff that happens to me that's unscripted. You know, so that's why I go live now. I'm like, listen, let's just show them and let's who she is. You yeah. know, and, and let's not try to, you know, sugarcoat it. <laughs> no doubt, and you know the the other video that I, I I think that probably a lot of freestyle fans thought they would never ever see because it was so long, rumored and and innuendo that there was like this long standing beef, and all of a sudden there you are doing a Facebook Live video with Karina. Oh yeah, yeah. That was well, something. Know, and, well, I'm I'm glad that you know the fans got a chance to, to check that out. Um, me and Karina have always been put against each other over the years. Mm-hmm. And it was rough. It was a rough, rough time because instead of us enjoying our success, we were just trying to battle and protect ourselves. And that's unfair to teenagers. It's unfair when you're trying to capitalize or enjoy your success. Not cool. No, you not know? at all. So we were put in that position. And, you know, I was I was cool enough to call her. She was cool enough to be receptive. I went over to her place. We shot the breeze. You know, she has a one-woman show coming up. I'm going to support it, and we're going to keep it moving. Absolutely. You know, because it shouldn't have to be that way. You know, and that's going to happen in every, in every walk of life, whether you do radio, whether you do TV, whether you have a nine-to-five, whatever you do. There are always going to be challenges in life. Mm-hmm. But we... You know, myself and her, we were put through the ringer. We really were, you know, and it's unfair, you know, but I'm still here. Yeah, you know, abso- absolutely. Here. So it's all good, and I took the, you know, I'm glad that we had a chance to, to do the, the quick, this quick interview, but you did get a lot of, um, info from me <laughs> <laughs> well that that's, that i haven't that, talked about yet that's so, uh so. that that's that's what you know i try to make sure every uh every interview is unique in some way uh you know so as we as we you know start to wind it down here let's uh you know full-on blast about the whole rise project uh this is kind of like a year in the making first you put out the regular single and then you got the the remix together um, real quick, how did uh, getting all the, the features, uh, you know, on, on the track, how did that all come about? That was rough. That was rough because Lee Felisa has her own schedule. She's been doing it longer than I have. Then you have Judy Torres that was doing her one-woman show as 
I was trying to get her in. We have C Bank, uh, which you know she's a featured artist on C Bank, which I have to bring her into my page because she has to explain her story. And it was rough. I I never thought I would get especially Visa Lisa, mm -hmm. you know. And when I accomplished that, I, I I sat back. I'm like, you know, we we are our own challenge, you know. I but for no one, I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm not gonna let anyone challenge me because I after they did that, people are still asking me, how did I accomplish that? Because right now today, I can't even do a video with them because the schedules are so off. You yeah. know, Lisa's on the West Coast, Julie's over there. I'm in the studio. It's just we, you can't get us together like that, you know. So I'm very blessed and I'm thankful that that happened. You know, now my main goal is to eventually perform the song together and document it because that's going to be, a, you know, that's going to be something to, to talk about forever. That's going to be the archive, you know, that we're going to leave behind for the kids. Yeah, you know, see, that right there, a performance, you know, if you if you filmed it correctly and you put filters on different spots, that could be the video. Yeah, but it's just so hard. Yeah. It's so hard. Yeah. You know, I, I believe me, trust me, I've been trying. <laughs> and I'm not a quitter. If you, if you, by now you should know LM does not quit. You no. know, I try to, if you close the door, I'm going to climb, I'm going to go through the window. Yeah, you know, there's a way to always climb in through. But I have, I can't be too aggressive and turn people off. I just have to be patient. Right, right. I, yeah, I mean, that, that's the whole thing. Patience is like, you know, one of the, um, you know, we, we, we kind of like touched on patience when we were having our conversation yesterday. So, uh, but that's, you know, behind the scenes. Uh, talk to me about all the merchandise that's available now on the Lisa Melendez fan page on Facebook. So we have, we have Rise t-shirts, uh, which have been selling out faster than I imagined. Um, and I have hoodies that came in as well. So now I'm working on, and I also have the Zed Melendez t-shirts with the pose that I do when I perform. Mm -hmm. um, so we have that going on, but there, you know, I can't keep up with the merchandise because it goes fast. And I don't want to order too much, you know, because with me, I just didn't feel that it was going to do that well. And it is. Right. So, you know, you can catch, you can go on my Facebook uh, fan page. And you can purchase my merchandise there. I have a greatest hits album, which has 20, 29 tracks, including Rise and the remix. And if you don't want to buy that, you can also buy um, Rise. You can buy the remix. I'm also working on Goody Goody, a different version of Goody Goody. So I'm revisiting a lot of the stuff that I did back then that didn't really get promotion. Mm -hmm. I'm working on that um, for people that don't know and that are not familiar you know, you may know Goody Goody, but, you know, the fans may, some of your fans may not know it. You know, oh, so I'll b believe it's reintroducing myself again. B you know? Believe me, you know, I, I'm, you know, I have a pretty good network of DJs around the country. And when I put up the, uh, the flyer for tonight's interview, a uh, couple, one from Miami, one from um, out my way on the West Coast and another one from the Midwest, they all commented, Goody Goody. And that's all they said. <laughs> Well, that's what we're playing right now. What you hear in the background is yeah. actually the DJ playing it a different version. Nice, nice. So one last thing, and you know, this from, from a DJ standpoint, and I know this kind of not on you, but get the Santana twins to press the vinyl. Oh, shut up, Randy. And I don't mean to disrespect you, but <laughs> <laughs> they're suppo that vinyl was supposed to be released months ago, you know? And I left it on their hands, and um, they're great guys, but, you know, I, I, I can't bash them. <laughs> you know, but lesson learned that the next vinyl that I put out, I'm going to have to do it on my own. I have a new, I, I also have a duet that I did with Cynthia. Mm -hmm. um, so it's called Listen. It's, right. It's that, L-I-S, right. and then Cynthia, S-C-Y-N. And... Um, it's a track that we did way back in the day, but I want to revisit that as well because a lot of fans don't know about it. So if I jazz it up a little bit, 2019, you know, you keep the music flowing a little bit with different ver versions of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I want to do a vinyl with that as well. So, but I know what you, you know, a lot of people are asking me about the, 
you know, the vinyl with the uh, rise and everything. But, you know, it's out of my hands because I, I put, my whole thing is that I put it in their hands and sometimes you got to do your own thing. Right, right. Well, you know uh, what I, mean? I, I just know that I need, I need my double so I can do some backspin <laughs> and, you know, get, get in the mix with it. But, uh, I got you, though. I got you. But, hey, so I like know. I told you before, though, keep, you remind me, just remind me, because, you know, if you would have never reminded me, I would have been like, you know, because there's so many people, and it's a blessing, but they want to do interviews, and I can't. I mm. just can't, you know. So I'm glad we had this opportunity to talk. Um, and I, and to, until next time, you know, I, we'll, we'll do. I I know as I know as well too. I've seen that you're on the lineup for the freestyle explosion out here in San Jose in July, right? I know I'm doing a, two of them. Uh, yes, I think that's what Alan said, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you'll so you'll you could just go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. No, you could just check that out. You know, you could check that out because I gotta get going now. All right. Because I'm still on my live page, but I'm but I'm not. There. <laughs> so, <laughs> I hear you. I yeah. hear you. Well, we yeah. d- we d- I definitely appreciate you taking the time to call in tonight. I'll let you get back to your Facebook Live, and um, we're gonna jump into the the remix of Rise right now, uh, featuring Lisa Lisa, Judy Torres, and Seabank. So, um, yes, you yes. know, it just goes a little something like that, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Yes, and I'm gonna keep you posted on as soon as I'm done with the Listen Project. I'm gonna send that over to you. So you Pl- have did on that please do please do will do will do so you have a good one and thank you for your support you bet i'll talk to you soon Lisette. i'll see okay. you soon bye bye